Hey, Gaming Geek here, coming at you. I apologize in advance, I am sick, and so my voice isn't that great. But, not gonna stop making these videos for all of you guys, and this video is gonna be a tutorial, a painting tutorial, on how I paint my terrain. And I actually use this method not only for my buildings, but also for my magnetic dungeon set. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and click here and you can see how I magnetized a 3D printed dungeon set. But that it uses the same color scheme uh, for anything that is stone, also for anything that is wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through painting this piece right here, since it has both wood and stone, as well as this slate roof. And so it's gonna be relatively easy. Uh, first off though, I wanna share with you what colors I have and what you're gonna uh, need to get. So here are the colors that you're going to need to paint and the most important part is having the right spray primers and I'm using the chalky finish anvil gray. I bought this at Lowe's and this is a pretty dark gray. For my brown I am using Rust-Oleum Camouflage 2x Ultra Cover and this is the Earth Brown. If you don't have access to these brands just try to find the darkest gray that you can as well as the darkest brown. <clears throat> so here are the craft paints that you're going to need. The first is a dark brown and burnt umber. Um, you don't have to get apple barrel. I actually like Americana brand the best out of all the craft paints, but any uh, burnt umber will work out. You can pick either one of these, the milk chocolate or the terracotta. I like the terracotta a little bit better because it's lighter than the milk chocolate, but either one will work. Uh, and this is for the wood. For the roofs, you can get the Georgia clay for the clay tile roofs. <clears throat> and then burnt orange for, I like using this for the wooden shingles on the roofs. And then uh, for the panel, I use toffee. What I mean by the panel is this part right here. Um, just any kind of beige, light beige will work. And then for stone, I have zinc. <clears throat> and this is similar in color to the spray primer. And then a medium gray, slate gray works. And then for the final dry brush, gray sky works out well. So those are really the only colors that you're gonna need. Uh, and then up here you'll see <clears throat> some um, metal and I use copper uh, from Games Workshop uh, for that but you can use any silver uh, you can even use craft paint silver or copper if you want first off though I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these wispy lines and strings that are inevitable in all 3d prints and the way that I do that is using a heat gun so I'll go ahead and show you how that works. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that at all, but there are these strings that are going across the print. And so what we're going to do is just get rid of those strings. And how you do that is I have my cheap electric heat gun. And in all honesty, you can also use a lighter but this is just going to be faster and you have to be careful because you don't want to melt the PLA. A PLA will melt even if it sits in the car and so you just have to be careful not to overheat it. So I go ahead and just turn it on. But the heat as it heats up is going to just get rid of all of the wispy lines. And again I hope you can see that. Let's see if I can get it as close as possible. And you can see it sort of just disappear. Okay, so I just use a box um, upside down and use that as a way to raise up the things that I'm going to paint off the ground. And so just grab your gray and give it a good coat. And you definitely want to do this outside, not inside anywhere. So anything that's going to be wood, including the roof tiles, I paint with the brown primer.
So I'll just go around and paint all of this. Make sure I get it from each side. So let me go ahead and show you the brushes that I have. What you want is for the dry brushing to have this stiff, almost horsehair kind of um, brushes. You, you can get a pack of these for relatively cheap. So the first step is I'm going to take this slate gray, the medium gray, and do my first layer of dry brushing all over the gray stones that I primed. And so I'll take a pretty large brush and not even bother to wet it down because we are dry brushing. So go ahead and get it on your brush and dry it off a little bit and then you're pretty much going like this. Across all of the stones. So now that the gray highlighting is done, you want to go ahead and grab your burnt umber, your dark brown, and color in all of the wood. So just use a regular sable brush, wet it down, and then grab some of the brown and do whatever is going to be uh, wood. Also, don't forget to do the floor of the second story, which is wood, whereas the first story is stone on the floor. And what I do is I use my brush to just get the edges like this. And we'll switch to a bigger brush just to do the insides. At this point I'm going to go ahead and glue this on to my deck and I just use super glue. You can use any kind of super glue, it doesn't really matter. But any kind of gluing that I need to do, I usually just use super glue on this. So now what we want to do is take our lighter brown, so I'm going to use terracotta or you can use milk chocolate, any lighter brown that you want. You grab a broad brush and dry brush this color onto 
all of the wood. And so I'll go ahead and start here and just very lightly go across. You don't want to fill in the cracks. And just bring out the grain of the wood. Like so. And, be, and because the brown is pretty dark, um, I usually go over this a second time just to give the highlights a little bit more no make it more noticeable and I'll go over this section again and show you how it lightens up once you put on a second coat So this is how it turns out. Looks pretty good. Just go over it again um, until it gets to the level of brown that you want. And in this model, go ahead and do the ground of the second floor as well, since it's made out of wood. Now you want to take a smaller stiff brush, like this one, and do the smaller areas, which would be um, these little outcroppings, as well as the shutters. Be careful not to get the stone with this highlight. But you don't need a lot, just enough to make the raised that just stand out a little bit more. Like so. We're going to color the um, roof tiles a different color, but make sure to grab these support trusses as well as the ground here or the floor for this little balcony that's sticking out and go ahead and just do black around these metal bands for the doors as well as the hinge you can go over this with silver if you want dry brush with silver but I'm just gonna keep my metal bits black all right, the next step is going to be the roof. I'm going to use Georgia clay for my roof tiles. Grab a big stiff brush and we're going to be basically dry brushing this paint color onto the roof. And you can be pretty liberal with it. And see how as I dry brush the paint is leaving the crevices dark brown and, but I still want a lot of the tile to be painted so I'm going with the grain of the print on and I will do a second coat but wait till that dries don't forget these little sections of roof that are over here just be careful not to get that you don't want to get. 
think I'm going to use a smaller brush to get in there. Maybe not. Alright, so once the first coat is dry, go ahead and put on a second coat just to put more color on there. Alright, so we need to use the zinc, which is our darkest gray, to work on these chimneys since we base coated them brown. So in essence what we're doing is we are creating a base coat of the gray primer so that we can do the stone. So I just grab my brush, sable brush, and just fill it in. So this is not dry brushing, but just getting all of the gray. And it doesn't matter if you get into the cracks because the cracks can remain the dark brown, but you do want to distinguish this from the rest of the roof since it's made out of stone. So now we're just highlighting with the slate gray again. And then finally just for this cap I'm going to be using um, hash, Hashut copper. Uh, you can use any copper or metal color that you want. You can use silver. Just as well. Check it out here. I got a tabletop full of buildings now for my fantasy war games. And here we have our project piece, and it looks awesome. And the painting went by actually pretty quickly. So you can remove the top, stick your guys in here. I'll need to put in some furniture. You can also remove this piece. Put a balcony outside so that your wizard can cast from the safety of the balcony. And this is all removable as well if you need to get uh, down here at the bottom. So this is a really nice piece. One of the things I noticed though is the scale seems a little bit off between the pieces. So with this one, the inn as well as the port house I think. Um, it seems different from the scale of the tower and the cottage because I feel like these should be increased in size. Because if you look at this, this is only supposed to be a uh, two-story house. This is supposed to be a three-story house and they're about the same height. So I feel like these need to be increased. And if you look at the brick or the stones as well, the stones that are a lot tighter together here as compared to the bricks uh, in the houses. So scale wise is a little bit off but in terms of getting buildings onto the field I think it looks really really good. Um, I do like the uh, ruined port house I think that or the ruined cottage. I do think that it looks really cool as well. I went ahead and glued the roof on there because there's no reason why I would take that off but paint scheme is all the same with all of these and I think it's a quick way to do it you might want to choose to do a different color on the shingles as compared to the slate roofs because they're a little bit close in color but um, because I already have blue roofs on my other set uh, I wanted to go with something that was warmer in color. So I think it turned out really cool looking. I really like these a lot. The trees are awesome as well. I painted um, using the same brown. I painted the trunks as well as the stones at the bottom and some of the flowers or whatnot. But I really love the trees. Yeah, I'm not going to be painting the leaves because I think they look fine the way that they are. 
Hopefully that helps you with your painting with these awesome sets. And again, we're going to be raffling off the house, one of these houses. And so become a patron so that you have an opportunity to possibly win. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.